Welcome Leo, this is Moonstone Soul, my name's Deborah and I'm going to do your mid-month love reading for November. I'm using a major arcana deck only, it's by Jane Lyon and we <coughs> are going to do a love tree spread. The deck is called the Love Tarot and it will apply to you whether you are currently partnered or not, whether you're dating or looking to date or not. Just trying to make sure that you can see all of these. Let's move them down a tad. There we go. Move them across. Now, if the messages here don't resonate with you, then please check out your moon and your rising signs. They may have more pertinent messages for your situation at the moment. So we'll just, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll get on with it now. And we'll have a look at where you are. This is you personally, where you're at with regards to your love life. And we have the death card, which is the card of Scorpio. So <clears throat> the death card is talking about a figurative death and rebirth. So it's not necessarily the end of a relationship. But it could be that you personally are going through a transformation with regards to <clears throat> love and romance. Um, if you're in a current relationship, perhaps you are making changes within yourself uh, to improve the relationship or perhaps even um, change the boundaries of it, change the parameters of how you're working within that relationship to make it better for you and your partner and the relationship as a whole. So that's an interesting time for you. There are changes afoot. And these are not necessarily changes within the relationship itself, but changes within you. So we'll just have a look at this card here, which talks about the past events that have made you get to the point where you are now. So there we go. We've got the Sun card, which is, of course, the card of Leo. <clears throat> and you'll notice down here that there are little cherubs, lovely little children. So it's a card of... Um, Love is a wonderful card to get in a love reading. Warmth, fun, children, whether the children have had an impact on your relationship, very possible with that card. So being the card of Leo, you have been very strong in your Leoness. Okay, be warm, open, generous, all those lovely things that Leo is. But you're, you're tempering that now with um, some changes that you need to make. And it has led you to your present situation, which is judgment. Now, I've been getting the judgment card in usually these one of these two positions, the past and the present. I've been getting them so often. I'll move those over. You can see. So often in these love readings. And I'm assuming that that's the energy of the Venus retrograde. That finishes in early to mid-November. I think it might be mid-November. And the judgment card is really does suit the Venus in retrograde, <clears throat> depending on where it falls in your chart, of course. But it's about revisiting, renewing. And with the death card, Perhaps it's you are it's go one of two ways. Maybe you have had an ex come back and you're re-looking at that relationship with them, perhaps thinking of restarting it. Or the relationship that you're in currently, you're having to do a little bit of revision work, which would explain the death card. So many um, people have been saying about this being this retrograde that exes are coming back all over the place issues are resurfacing that they need you know you've been in this lovely sun position but some you need some tweaking and the judgment card and the death card are very indicative of that so we'll just have a look to see what the future holds now by future i mean we're doing this mid-november i would say between mid early to mid-december this is the energy that you're looking at, but time is fluid, so, you know. Ah, okay. So you've been doing some tweaking, 
and you're continuing to do so, revisiting, rethinking, reassessing, making some changes within yourself, um, changes possibly even about what you want and how you want to get it and who you want to have it with. And the future is looking very bright. That lover's card talks about like a divine union. Uh, in a love reading, then we're talking about a romantic love situation. Can also talk about a business situation. So perhaps even uh, the person you're with, you're going to uh, start a business with them or you're working together, you might be colleagues. Now, if you're not partnered, I think uh, what you're looking at here is that you have been quite happy not partnered, actually, just enjoying your own sunshine. But perhaps someone has come back or they're about to come back. Uh, maybe there was a missed opportunity with someone because of circumstances. And there's now the potential coming up quite soon in the next few weeks to really make that work. And maybe that's due to some of this internal change. That lover's card in the future is, is lovely. Now, this card down here is the underlying factors and influences. This is often a card of, of things that you're not aware of. Could be going on with your partner or potential partner. Uh, could be going on with other circumstances surrounding the two of you that you have no control over. So this is kind of what surprises are in store. And we'll have a look. We've got the moon. Now the moon is, is the card of uncertainty, mystery, illusion. And for it to be in the underlying circumstances and factors, something what's influencing your love life, does mean that you just kind of have to have your sensible head on. Because the moon can make you overly emotional. You can see there, it's the card of Pisces, which is a very dreamy, romantic sign. It's a water sign. And it really does highlight emotional issues. It can also be about creativity and imagination and deception. So I would, taking these cards, I'd say this looks lovely you're doing some inner changes which is making all this happen but just be aware that in the background there might be something going on that you are completely unaware of and it could well impact what's going to happen within your love life so just be it's not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing it could just mean that your partner is um, getting creative and it's going to spring a lovely surprise on you, you know, whether that's a dinner out or a, a date that you wouldn't have expected doing something different. Or it could mean that there's something going on that you should be aware of, but are not. And it could just take you by surprise a little bit. So just be on the lookout for that. As I say, not necessarily bad, nor good. Doesn't necessarily mean there's cheating going on, even though the moon can can be related to deception. Could also just be, um, could be your partner's got the rose-coloured glasses on, not seeing things clearly, or other things are factoring into the emotions of both of you, impacting on the relationship. It's not a very clear one. And I'm getting the moon for quite a lot of people. So I think... While this Venus retrograde is still going on, I, I would just be a little cautious. I am being a little cautious myself um, because Venus retrograde has the reputation of bringing things back to you that may be with the judgment card here, bringing things back to you that you just need to hang fire on. Um, enjoy it. But we just got to wait a little longer before we can solidify it, which looks like it's going to. OK, so you, you, you're re-looking at something or someone within your relationship. 
And if you give it a little while, that lover's card does suggest it's going to come out really nicely for you. Just, just be aware, there may be some surprises in store. Now, I'm also looking at a card for the Oracle of Visions deck by Ciro Marchetti with some beautiful artwork, just as a little guidance on this. And here we have card number 50. Here we go. And this really, it reminds me of Ariel, the mermaid. She's enclosed in her bubble. A little bit like this moon, isn't it? Enclosed in the bubble. And it may be time for you to break out of that. So I'll just read what it says here. I don't know if you can see that card there. It's a particularly pretty one. And I do, it does seem to suggest to me that, you know, the rose-coloured glasses are on there and you are being a little insular and it may well be time to break out of that. So this is all about curiosity, comparisons and dissatisfaction. It says, we are driven at first by curiosity and then by dissatisfaction to consider alternatives to our present circumstances which would really explain the death card okay, that there. <clears throat> Something wasn't working for you with regards to perhaps this relationship that seems to have been reborn or an ex coming back to you. So you weren't satisfied, so you've made some changes. The grass appears to be greener on the other side of the fence, or so we believe. So that's... Basically, um, talking about coming out of your comfort zone, you know, um, just extending yourself a little more. Maybe do something imaginative or out of the box, something you weren't expecting. And that will improve your, your love situation. And obviously, if you're not partnered, then coming out of your comfort zone is going to enable you to meet different people and one of those people may take you by surprise and it may work out really nicely for you so it's worth a shot it's always good for us to come out of our comfort zone and if you're going through this death situation uh, your death and rebirth internally you may well be more open to doing something like that doing something different Okay, Leo's never afraid of uh, coming forward. They're very confident and they do like uh, the social scene. So maybe that's a way to just get yourself out of the rut and come forward and maybe meet someone new. Now, I've also got a Crystal Angels or Oracle card by Doreen Virtue. We've got Amethyst there. It says, Revealing Your True Self. As you allow others to know the real you, you'll feel loved for who you truly are. So in the past, I mean, that's Leo, that you are being who you are. There's no doubt about that. But maybe you hadn't been. Okay, so now you're revealing your true self through this process of death and rebirth. And that will allow whoever comes in to really understand you and love you for who you are. And here's a little amethyst stone. You may want to grab yourself a little piece of this, carry it around with you, maybe buy a piece of jewelry. There's a lot of amethyst jewelry around. It's all very beautiful. It's a lovely soothing stone. And that will, um, it's often known as, um, well, it's known as lots of things to be honest, but it's often known, um, working on the third eye so tuning into your intuition as well uh, it's a it's a very popular one it's not expensive it's very easily found uh, in shops or online so amethyst is something that you could look at for this month I've also got a bit of rose quartz and a bit of green aventurine which is quite interesting with regards to this card here because Green Aventurine is um, a card, sorry, a stone for the heart chakra. But unlike Rose 
quartz, which is also, you know, it's the love stone. That's why I've got it here for the love readings. This one is opening ourselves up to new opportunities, new way of doing things, taking us out of our comfort zone, being open for a little bit of adventure. And maybe that's what this is, you know. Leos are very adventurous, very confident, very out there. So I don't know why you wouldn't be feeling like that. Uh, but whatever happened previous to the sun card, maybe it dented your little Leoness, and you've come back to that, and you're ready to move forward in a new way, revealing your true self. And if you do that, and you have the opportunity for this lover's card, it's going to be based on something really real. And that leaves so many opportunities open to you and your partner. If you're not partnered, then this card is saying, just be yourself, come out of your comfort zone, and opportunity could be waiting for you right around the corner, very possibly somewhere that you didn't expect, you know, and maybe coming out of your comfort zone has, has opened you up to opportunities that you didn't think would present love opportunities. But it appears by these cards that it does. So whatever you try, whether it's something new, a club, or going to a, a different uh, area of town, going out with a different set of friends, trying a new hobby, whatever it is, uh, with the lover's card could also possibly be um, changing departments at work or changing jobs, then, you know, you, you just don't know what's around the corner, and that's what the moon is telling us. You don't know what's around the corner. Give it a go. See what happens. And I think that's a pretty exciting. It's not, it doesn't give you an awful lot of resolution, although why you'd need any more than that, I don't know, for that lover's card. But this really does say there's, there's something unexpected, something surprising. That's pretty exciting. So be who you are. Be your true Leo self. Move forward with confidence. Try something new. And the world of possibility will open up for you, which is very exciting. Lucky you. I'd love to hear how it all plays out for you. If you want to pop a comment down below, that would be great. And I will see you in early December for the Celtic Cross monthly reading. And again, mid-December for the next love reading. And we'll see how this story progresses. So until then, take care. Uh, enjoy yourself and try something different. Take care now.